Views on censorship and free speech. Okay. I don't think, I think even framing the question as a question about censorship or free speech is part of the problem. I don't think that's where the problem is. Um, you know, if we think about free speech, meaning people's right to state an opinion and a preference and a perspective and to say what they believe when that belief or that perspective is not sanctioned by the majority or agreed with by the majority. And if what we're talking about is our freedom to be able to dissent to things that are um, sort of taken for granted, I'm 100% behind people being allowed to express whatever they wanna express, okay? So as a high 3000 foot principle, of course I believe in free speech. Now, the word censorship, if we're talking about a um, sort of like a governmental body or a large group of people deciding for other people what is and isn't good for them, and giving them access or not access to neutral data and neutral information. I'm not a fan of censorship at all. I don't think that that is how we evolve. I don't think that that's how we move forward. I don't think that's how we think critically. So just in terms of those concepts, I'm not a fan of censorship and I'm a huge fan of free speech. Now, here's where I think it gets very, very complicated. In the contexts within which we are living right now, um, the way in which information is manipulated, the way in which human beings are using um, words on screens, images on screens, when we're bringing into this a high degree of manipulation and propaganda and lies and deception and illusion and fear mongering for a capitalistic or political agenda that is not grounded in the well-being of all people and life on the planet, now we have a huge problem. But that is because the, what, we, what we're not talking about is the intention of the free speech and the intention and the function of the censorship. So we need to be thinking about more than just these concepts because they're thrown around in very casual ways for purposes that are not, um, earnest, authentic, honest, in alignment with what I believe in or what I would want to see happening. Do I want everybody to be able to say what they think with the intention of creating a world that works for all people? Yes. Yes, I do. I highly believe in that. But do, and do I want to live in a world where a small group of people are given power over everybody else's access to information and everybody else's access to ideas. No, I don't want to live in that kind of world. When we take these concepts and use them to rationalize violence, we're in very, very tricky territory. And when we use these concepts to rationalize being aggressive, being punitive, being punishing, lying to one another, manipulating one another, that's really where I see the problem. I don't, and I think framing it as a, pro, as a problem of censorship and free speech, even though I understand why that's happening, it misses nuances that I think are really, really important for us to be talking about. Okay. I think we need to be thinking about the intention and the function and the impact of conversation as much as everything else. How is it being used and for what purpose? And is that a purpose that we can trust or not? There's a huge erosion of trust. We live in an aggressive and violent time where people are using things like this to aggress and control and hurt and punish. And that's different than being able to say something that I believe that other people might not agree with. Maybe one way to hold this is um, we want to take this conversation into a more fruitful place than the dualistic oversimplified either or. You're either for free speech or not without an examination of what we really mean. So maybe we, we just hold it like that for now. Yeah, I absolutely support your, so one way I might hold this is I absolutely support your freedom to express what is real for you. 
Now, in a dyad, in a, in a relational frame, I don't want you to censor yourself. I want you to tell me exactly where you're at and who you are. And then I want to be able to hear what you're saying to me in a nonviolent way. So maybe you, dear other, whoever that is, Maybe you're saying a lot of really uh, racist, sexist, controlling, punitive, moralistic, self-righteous, I don't know, the things that I would find challenging. Maybe I'm hearing a lot of that. So the answer to how uncomfortable I feel when I'm hearing that is not censorship. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that uh, culturally people want to slap censorship on it to make, everybody, to make the people who are uncomfortable feel better, right? So the relational response to that is, me checking in, what is it about these ideas? What is it about these ways of being, thoughts, beliefs that I'm finding uncomfortable? And then being in a relational conversation with you about how it impacts me, what happens in me, and then inviting you to care about me. That's the relational, that's the nonviolent conversation. It's a relational conversation. The problem is that these things are getting played out in political arenas, not, not relational arenas. And so we're not talking about the same thing anymore. We're talking about propaganda and deception and lies and misinformation for the purpose of garnering votes, for the purpose of supporting an existing power structure or an emerging power structure that wants more control. Mm -hmm. And so these things are being used as pawns in a, a game of violence. So we wanna be careful about what we mean. And we want to be looking at intention. So, yeah, I'll give this more thought. I'll loop back to you <laughs> with more depth on this as I sit with it. But it's a very rich and very important thing for us to be talking about. 